The type of catalysts that I'm mostly interested in is the family of porous catalysts. One of the most important ones that I'm focusing my research on is zeolites. This is a, an example of one of them. Zeolite materials are currently used for a series of reactions. The, probably the most important one is the cracking of crude oil in, in refineries around the world to obtain products like uh, gasoline and other chemicals that are starting materials for many other processes in the industry, such as the production of plastic. They're also useful for the synthesis of gasoline from a smaller molecule, methanol, which can be obtained in a renewable manner. And a third reaction that uh, I believe is also very important is the conversion of nitrogen oxides into more benign molecules in the exhausts of uh, diesel engines. One of the problems that we have within the surface science community to study these materials is that typically surface science tools like, like the instrument we, we see back here, which is a scanning tunneling microscope, these instruments need an exposed surface and within this material the active site where the reaction happens is inside of a pore surrounded by more zeolite, more aluminum silicate. So we cannot access it with our instruments which typically for other materials allow us uh, to get information down to the atomic scale. So we cannot do that for real zeolites. So the approach that we have taken is to synthesize another material. This would be a dummy zeolite that has the same chemical behavior as the real one, but it has the active site exposed on a surface. This is the, the model for uh, the zeolite model system that we have synthesized. Uh, and, and here, instead of having the active site in the pore, we have it on the surface and we can carry out the same reaction on it with the advantage that we can now use the, the tools of surface science that can provide a lot more detail or additional information when compared to typical tools used for real zeolites. So what we have here is a, what is called the reactor STM. STM stands for Scanning Tunneling Microscopy. This is a type of microscopy that allows us to see surfaces down to the atomic scale. We can see individual atoms. And the particular feature about this scanning tunneling microscope is that we can do this imaging at relevant industrial conditions. This, is, this scanner is a small chemical reactor. We can have up to four atmospheres of gases in there and we can vary the temperature as well, so we can mimic uh, conditions of the industry and we, have a, we can follow with a mass spectrometer the products coming out of the surface. While this gives us the, the imaging, the microscopy, we have uh, the ambient pressure X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy and station at the light source where we can follow the chemical state of all the species involved, including the, the, the catalyst and the, the molecules that are on the surface. And we have um, a third instrument that is in the lab next door, that is an infrared reflection absorption um, uh, spectrometer that allows us to follow the molecular vibrations of the adsorbents, including reactants, intermediates, and products on the surface, and that allows us to follow the mechanisms of the reaction. So the combination of these three operando tools is giving us a more complete picture of the catalytic process in the model systems. So the ultimate goal would be to be able to translate what we learn here into something useful for society, uh, improve current chemical processes or develop new ones based on, on what we learn from the research we do here. There are people from all over the world working here so they bring both the culture from many different places uh, and ethnicities and also fresh ideas that we otherwise would not be exposed to. So it's melting pot both of ideas and, and cultures.